Six months ago, I pointed a very expensive telescope at nothing for five hours. Because that video got such a great reception, I contacted the team working at Telescope Live, one of the world's biggest remote observatories, and asked if they'd partner with me on a new project. I wanted to repay some of my supporters by converting their names into numbers that made coordinates which corresponded to a region in our night sky. I then pointed some very expensive telescopes at these spots and we found some truly magnificent wonders. This time, we're going bigger and better. I've converted 15 more names into coordinates before then capturing the particular region in our night sky that they correspond to. And for the video after this, I'm hoping to do 50 more. That's right, 50. But it doesn't just have to be people's names, it can be deep sky objects that you find particularly interesting, or even ones that you're just curious as to what the object might look like. For example, M69, IC420. I'm looking for 50 brand new suggestions, so be sure to comment below any ideas and stay tuned to find out how you can play a part in the next video. But as for now, let's get started on our freshest, most recent observations. These are the list of names I've converted and these are their corresponding coordinates. I'm Damon Scotting and this is Astronomical. First up, we have Melody Sheep. That's right. The Melody Sheep. A few months ago, a kind man named Oliver got in touch and suggested that on the back of the previous video, I capture an image of the night sky corresponding to the legendary YouTuber Melody Sheep as a gift for his upcoming birthday. I gave it a shot, and with Oliver's help, we managed to create this final image. Featured in Melody Sheep's image is the Pinwheel Galaxy, which looks incredible even when imaged with such a wide field telescope. Now this is probably my favourite image from today's episode, because I think out of all of the images, this one best depicts the immense depth of space thanks to the help of a particularly famous nebula. Here to the right of our field of view we have Messier Object 16, the Eagle Nebula. These three colossal towers of dust and gas have invoked a cosmic sense of wonder in thousands of us before, and I don't doubt that they are about to do the same to a number of people watching this for the first time right now. They are one of the most spellbinding deep sky objects you can observe as an amateur. These are the pillars of creation. At five light years high, these pillars are reaching the end of their star formation period. With the help of the Hubble and more recently, James Webb telescopes, we've been able to observe them in much more spectacular detail than any amateur could possibly imagine. Next up, we have Luke's image, which is basically a cosmic zoo filled with almost a hundred different galaxies. Thanks to the extremely high resolution capabilities of Telescope Live CMOS cameras, images like this can be explored in a fantastic level of detail, with each of the galaxies being distinctly visible upon a closer look. In terms of pointing a telescope at a random region of our night sky and taking a photo goes, this is what I like to call the jackpot. Because nine times out of 10, the images taken look a lot like these which is rather unfortunate for Patrick, Kalps, and Nathan. These images were taken using a telescope with a relatively wide field of view, but sometimes, even when switching to a much more powerful setup, there really isn't too much to explore. But even when there is, when you do find something truly inexplicable to explore in your field of view, you can't be certain your images won't be interrupted by some artificial satellites. As is the case with Jake's image, Towards the top right of our image, we have a faint galaxy that is overshadowed by the series of satellites that have passed by over the course of an hour's worth of images. Imaging in luminance red, green and blue filters is the reason why these horizontal lines are different colours. It's hard to compare my image with the most recent deep sky surveys in order to look for differences when these intermittent interruptions are occurring. Thankfully however, with my next observation, Seamus, I had no such issues and I did come across something that wasn't on the deep sky survey. This peculiar looking green planetary nebula. Nothing too exciting if we're being completely honest with ourselves, but by using the specialized filters offered by Telescope Live, it's possible to bring out more of the nebulosity and fainter aspects of deep sky objects that are otherwise invisible to our naked eyes. But if it's dazzling nebulae that you seek, then look no further than in between Gwyn 016. Upon pointing the telescope at Gwyn's username, I captured everyone's favorite Norse god, or his helmet at least. This is Thor's helmet. An object I've previously only ever seen close-ups of. Now, in this context, it looks so alone, 
like a piece of space debris drifting off into one of the corners of our universe. This colourful emission nebula is a result of a particularly large and violent star at its centre, shedding its outermost layers as it prepares to go supernova. Admire it whilst you can, because nothing lasts forever. For as few who explore the cosmos with our telescopes and cameras, it seems like Christmas, given all the wondrous celestial events we can observe, seemingly here for only the blink of an eye on the cosmic timescale. I'm sure my next member would agree. Gentleman Santa. His name directed me towards a field of view that surprisingly did not look all that too dissimilar from the previous one featuring Thor's helmet. It's a weird feeling being given keys to the kingdom, because now that nowhere is off limits, where do you explore first? How do you decide which dark corner of the universe you should point these colossal telescopes at? It almost seems like a dream scenario, filled with endless possibilities. Nowhere is nothing if you point your telescope there for long enough. Now, all of these observations are only possible thanks to the help of Telescope Live, and if you are interested in replicating these observations yourself or doing your own explorations, then you can do so for as little as 85 cents a credit. The average cost of each of these observations was 20 credits, which on this basis is about $17. The image that I captured of the Pillars of Creation, by the way, cost me just eight credits as I captured it whilst the moon was up. And as a result, Telescope Live give you a discount of up to 75%. So this gorgeous photo, which will belong to you and only you, would have cost you just $7. And remember, you can point it anywhere at anything you like. So why not try out your own observations today by signing up for a free one week trial? No credit card required, just click the link in the description below. I encourage you all to explore these images for yourself, especially since their immense resolutions of 60 megapixels allow you so much room to dive deep in and spot even the faintest objects. With these images of Matt, Lucy and Mark being my favourites from this session, please let me know if you spot anything peculiar in these images themselves. Because recently, one of my viewers did spot something very unusual indeed. It all started when I hosted a giveaway on my Instagram page around the Christmas period, and one of the prizes was for me to point one of Telescope Live's telescopes at your name. The winner of this was a very kind person named Nadine. Upon winning, I received another message in my DMs from her boyfriend, Hans, who was kind enough to let me know that he also really enjoyed watching my videos, which is very kind of him, so I decided to capture an image of his name too. Unfortunately, however, his image turned out to be a fairly mundane landscape. Whereas Nadine's, on the other hand, was another beautiful landscape filled with lots and lots of galaxies, and as it turns out, a weird anomaly. Hmm, like I've just said, the detail in these images is huge. You can spend a lot of time panning through these patches of our night sky. Well, Hans was doing just that when he came across this. Now, without cheating or checking the comments, any guesses on what this is? I think it's fair to say that one of every astronomer's shared dreams is to capture a supernova explosion taking place. These rare and extremely chaotic events occur on average once every 100 years within our galaxy. But as it stands, we are long overdue one. Where will the next one come from? Well, we have a few ideas, but it's very hard to say with a degree of certainty whose turn it is next to light up our night sky. The weird offset red and blue colours here made me question whether or not this was a rare cosmic event. My suspicions grew after I cross-checked it with our most recent sky surveys and found that it was previously not there. How exciting. My next step was to check the individual images to see if this revealed any more information. And it did. The individual images successfully ruled this out as a supernova. Why? Well, because it was moving. This explains the different colours. Imaging in different coloured filters throughout my session has led to this object producing different coloured traces on my final image. I opened Stellarium and changed the date and time to the exact moment of observation, but nothing. Whatever it was, it was obscure enough that it wasn't available on Stellarium's basic database. I had to go deeper, which led me to the minor planet Checker. After inputting the exact data, it produced a single result for any object being within that vicinity. 532 Herculina, a tiny asteroid posing no immediate threat, quietly going about its business in the shadows. I pointed a telescope with a higher magnification at the asteroid and managed to record it move across our night sky. Mystery solved. Sometimes in astronomy, the truth is stranger than fiction. But for the most part, the truth is the simplest possible explanation, regardless of how exotic you hope its true nature may be. But hey, 
Who knows what lies in store for us next? With the help of our powerful remote telescopes and hundreds of thousands of keen-eyed astronomy lovers. If you'd like to feature in the next video, then here's your chance. Simply comment below a word, name, or designated deep sky object, and I'll do my best to pick out 50 of them from the comments, which I would then point these cosmic detectives at. I'm really excited by what we might find. If you'd like to download any of the images from today's video, then you can do so by clicking the link in the description below. And of course, if you are interested in carrying out your own independent observations of our cosmos, then why not sign up for a free one week trial at Telescope Live? No credit card required. Just simply click the link in the description below. That's all for now. I hope to hear from you all again soon, but until then, clear skies. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical.